Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. Today's topic is finance in dentistry or payment in dental care. So this is the most toughest chapter in public health dentistry that I feel. So even when I was a student, I find it very difficult to understand the concept. And as a teacher, it's quite difficult to express the concept or make the students to understand the concept of finance in dentistry. The main problem lies with this chapter is the whole concept is uh, all the concept of finance in dentistry is not from our country. There's a uh, very few concept that is just a payment for service or a private fee for services based on our country and rest all the plans are uh, about United States so American system of finance is what we are trying to understand because we have never seen is seen these programs in uh, our life most of us have not seen or heard of it so only thing we have witnessed or we have come across in life will understand uh, in a better way so this is just a imaginary scenario we have to mark up all the concept so in this video I'll try to explain you with a, a chalk and board a type presentation. So hope you can understand it in a better way, the various concept. So let's get started. So what are the mechanisms of payment in dentistry? So the first one is private fee for service. Then we have post payment plans, private third party prepayment plans this is also a third party plan okay then we have salary and public programs so with respect to india or as far as indian scenario concerned we have only private fee for service that is just like we are going to a dentist the treatment done and we are paying for the service that is one option we have next one is a salary so dentist is appointed by an employer and he is paying salary every month that is the second option so these two options is what uh, our country has these two are very simple administratively and uh, there is not much complications involved so the complicated ones are third party private plans and post payment plans a few public programs are also existing in various countries so let's see what is private fee for service that is what uh, our country has the first one is private fee for service that is a two-party arrangement only dentist and the patient is existing in the system it is a very traditional form of payment so we go to dentist treatment done paying the dentist so it is culturally very much acceptable, it is very flexible and administratively simple one. There is no much complication or paperwork. But the disadvantage is, even though we have flex uh, flexibility and price discrimination, uh, there are still some patients who cannot afford this dental care because we know dentistry is a very expensive kind of treatment. So few patients might not be able to afford this. so that was the biggest problem of private fee for service so that's what our country is having around 90 to 95 percentage so the next one is post payment plan so before post payment plan we need to understand the concept okay so you might be hearing the third party uh, everywhere in this chapter that is third party involvement so in private fee for service we have just two party that is patient and dentist first party second party so you can interchange it there is no problem so third party is what uh, the American system is completely based on third party arrangement there is no direct payment of fee to the dentist it's all done by third party and how the third party is doing is uh, the rest of the chapter is talking about so this is post payment plan or the budget plan 
So post payment, we know the post payment system in our mobile uh, billing. So we have prepayment that is we pay first and get the treatment done or get the uh, data usage or get the mobile uh, monthly plan we take up. Sometimes we use the data or use the service and at the end of the month we pay for it that is post payment plan. So that concept is applied here. Treatment first then payment but payment via a third party and in post payment plan it is by bank or a funding agency. So it started in 1930s by some local dental society in Pennsylvania and Michigan. So under this plan, what happens is the patient borrows money from the bank for some financial company for paying dentist. So once the process, the paperwork is done, the bank pays the entire fee to the dentist. Okay. So we just taking loan process we go to a bank we take education loan and the bank uh, pays to the college or bank gives uh, demand draft and goes to the college so after the application approved bank pays the entire fee to the rentist the patient then repays the loan to the bank in a budgeted amount so the treatment will be done once the loan is approved we can go to a dentist with the papers and get the treatment done then on a frequency manner we can repay to the bank but the problem with this post payment plan was at the time they had been developed it was hoped that this would benefit large segment of population but what happened actually was it was used primarily by the middle income group than the lower group. It was meant to used by the lower income group but actually it was used by middle income group. So its purpose was not served and it was no more using in uh, any system of uh, finance and dental care. So that was a failure. Post payment plan or budget plan was a failure. So keep this in mind. At the first party and the second party and third party because this keeps on changing since this is a post payment plan bank or funding agency comes so in our prepayment plan we will face uh, so many third parties so that's about private fee for service and post payment plan so next we have private prepayment plans okay so prepayment plan is nothing like just the opposite of post payment we first pay the third party uh, and uh, sign the paper or we have the papers paperwork done just like a car insurance to get the next year policy we pay at the beginning of the year and get the um, policy or the get the car insured for the next one year so it's like on a frequent interval maybe six months or maybe one year we keep paying at the beginning of the period then that entire period will be covered our treatment will be covered so we don't know what problems we may have in future so we keep on paying the premium every year uh, to get the treatment done so sometimes it might go to loss because uh, so we know how car insurance is working every year we paying the premium but sometimes uh, there won't be any claim for that year so that year policy actually is not giving us any protection or that money is going in waste but this is how it is working because insurance uh, policies are like that we have to pay beginning of the year or beginning of our financial year and we get a uh, our car or our vehicle covered for next one year so similar way we cover our teeth for one year or a certain period of time by paying the premium at the beginning of the period so what is the definition of private 
prepayment plans that is payment for for, for services by some agency rather than directly by the patient it is same as post payment plan there is a third party involvement only difference is we are paying at the beginning not the after the treatment before the treatment goes into action or before the treatment we are receiving we should pay the premium the dentist and the patient are the first and second party and the administrator is a third party okay So it is a uh, it is a dental payment contract that may collect premium, assumes financial risk, and play games, uh, play games and provides administrative services. So the third party is also known as carrier, insurer, underwriter, or administrative agent. Okay, so third party is. Uh, call under all these names so that is a prepayment system and post payment system so we'll see what is exactly each plan is about in detail in future slides so now let's see another subtopic that is insurable risk so insurable risk is a frequently asked question so when when uh, so when a risk can be insured on what condition risk can be insured so that is a question so to be insurable a risk must be precisely definable okay so we need to define what is going to be the risk and it should have a sufficient magnitude if it occurs it constitutes a major loss so we are insuring a vehicle and the vehicles uh, damage should be sufficient that there should be a major loss then only they will give insurance and should be very infrequent that is the most important thing in insurance if something happens for like nine out of ten times the insurance companies won't give you insurance because if they are giving uh, insurance for nine out of ten times the company will be at loss so the company will be a failure on profit basis they can't make any profit and they will stop the company by one year so what their mind is like if you are giving ten policies only one or two will come for a claiming so they have eight members policies as a deposit so they need to pay for only one or two so always insurance will be given for a very infrequent thing so every vehicle should be insured every vehicle should be insured and only one or two cars out of 10 or we can say 10 or 20 cars out of 100 is having an accident and going for a claiming so that is the concept it should be always infrequent and it should be of unwanted nature so risk is never will be given for a wanted nature like health so health is a wanted nature everybody is very much concerned about health so only thing which are not very much important to our life the insurance will be given or otherwise there will be so much conditions we have to apply so it should be of unwanted nature and it should be beyond the control of individual because health is something which we can control to an extent so conditions which are under our control the insurance will not be given if they are giving there will be a lot of conditions to be applied so these are insurable risk that is a risk can be insured under these criteria so like i said the health is a wanted nature and it can be controlled by individuals so generally the insurance companies are not much favoring the health insurance but there are there are companies who is giving health insurance but the thing is they have so much conditions to be applied so let's see how insurance companies overcome these problems while coming to the health insurance okay this is a general thing while coming to the health insurance what they are doing is having patient pay a share of cost so it is like 
they will not give you exactly everything but a percentage of total cost the remaining cost has to be paid by the patient so why they are keeping this concept means the patient will not utilize this so that is the first one having patient pay a share of cost then limited the service like they will not give uh, insurance or uh, coverage for every treatment they will give only a limited service they will not give for all the the treatment because we know that health problems or dental problems are very prevalent so all the people are going and claiming for insurance means the company will be uh, a big failure on profit basis so they limit the services they won't give for everything only few conditions few problems they will not give for pre-existing if you have a pre-existing condition uh, so many things are there so that is limiting the range of services and cosmetic restrictions are not covered because everyone can go for a cosmetic restriction it is totally uh, a subjective uh, mind so if insurance is covered for something people is people will uh, misutilize this and the next one is offering coverage only to groups so uh, to avoid adverse selection adverse selection means if insurance is covered for all the groups people who is not actually needing a treatment or needing a coverage will utilize this just to avail that insurance so to remove that group of people who will misutilize this uh, insurance uh, the companies what they do is they restrict the coverage only to few groups to avoid adverse selection okay so that is known as adverse selection and always they keep waiting period it is like we are taking a health insurance today they will not be activated tomorrow they keep some three months or six months waiting period to ensure that we are healthy people and uh, most of the insurance companies will not uh, give insurance for a people with uh, already existing some existing diseases if we have some pre-existing diseases they won't give insurance because they would know that if we have disease we would definitely claim so always they give to healthy people so to make sure that we are not misutilizing uh, the insurance and also to make sure that we are healthy they keep a waiting period for three months or six months so during that period if we are, if we are claiming we won't get insurance so healthy people they keep uh, three months or six months waiting period to make sure that we don't have any disease. And the next one is using pre-authorization and annual expenditure limit. So always we need to get the insurance only from uh, few points, not from few uh, hospitals or few firms. We cannot just go to any places or any uh, hospitals it is already authorized uh, people will be there or authorized hospitals or authorized clinics will be there so we can avail treatment or covering uh, done only on those uh, authorized people or authorized hospitals and there will be always a upper limit for our treatment expenditure so we need uh, many restrictions, uh, many implant therapy it might cost some five times, ten times of our uh, expenditure limit. It is not possible. They always keep to avoid over utilization of our insurance. They keep expenditure limit. So that's about insurance risk. What is the insurance risk? When a risk insured? What conditions? and what uh, insurance companies are doing uh, for giving health insurance so these are the conditions for a general insurance since health is unwanted nature and it is under control of individual and it is very frequent and uh, all these principles are violated in coming to condition because it cannot be properly defined 
we can say that it is a major loss sometimes it is a major loss but most of the conditions are not a major loss and it is very frequent it is wanted nature and it is under the control of individual so these uh, modifications they are made just to apply into health insurance okay so that is a just uh, a different part when insurance uh, be insured and what is health insurance uh, scenario so now let's uh, get back to our three party arrangement so we have seen post payment plan next we have uh, prepayment plan so post payment plan we are not uh, seeing anymore because we are into prepayment third party plan okay so we have payment mechanism in prepayment uh, third party mechanism that is deductible coinsurance and group insurance so this is the payment mechanism so first understand the first party second party and third party arrangement first party is a patient second party is a dentist third party is an insurer carrier or administrator so the payment mechanism is how the patient pays to the third party or insurance company and the reimbursement mechanism is how the third party is reimbursing to the second party that is dentist so the payment mechanism this is a prepayment mechanism system so the first method is deductible second is coinsurance third is group insurance in deductible we have a fixed amount that is front end payment for particular coverage so if it is 10000 premium and we have a 1 lakh coverage so if the cost is around 60000 or 70000 80000 let it be any amount up to 1 lakh we have to pay only 10000 the coinsurance is like co-payment or sharing uh, scenario so we have to share 30 percentage of the total cost if it is 1 lakh we have to share 30,000 and we will be getting only 70,000 if it is 50,000 we have to uh, bear the 30,000 uh, sorry 30 percentage that will be 15,000 and the insurance will be for 35,000 it will be 30 to 70 so it is just an example it can be in any sequence only thing is coinsurance the patient has to bear a fixed amount of uh, percentage of total cost group insurance as i discussed uh, it is for the groups for uh, like uh, students uh, in a particular class or any uh, institute or any rehabilitation center or such things so this is a payment mechanism next is a reimbursement mechanism reimbursement mechanism is how the third party is giving to dentists or reimbursing the uh, dentist the first concept is UCR concept that will be dealt in detail usual customary and reasonable second one is table of allowances third one is fee schedules table of allowances is nothing like sometimes there is a problem dentist fee uh, greater than the allowances they receive so patient uh, has to pay extra amount uh, to match up with the dentist fee so that is a problem fee schedules like uh, the the schedules will be there for each service uh, but the main payment will be taken as a reimbursement since it is inflexible and there is no autonomy uh, it is not very really accepted by the dentist okay so this is table of allowances fee schedule and ucr so the only thing we need to understand is this is a payment mechanism this is a reimbursement mechanism this is a payment mechanism this is a reimbursement mechanism so if you have this idea of first party second party third party this will be pretty much easier to understand see what is deductible it is known as front end payment so it is a fixed amount that patient pays towards the cost of treatment for the benefit of program going to effect like for automobile insurance deductible 10,000 means if the damage occurred the owner pays only 10,000 where the total cost may reach up to 1 lakh this is just an example so you have a 1 lakh covered for that vehicle so you are paying 10,000 rupees so if your car damaged and you require 1 lakh you will get 1 lakh just for paying 10,000 premium that is deductible or friend and payment whereas coinsurance is called as co-payment it means that patient pays a percentage of total cost of treatment 
so during uh, it is dunning defined as a coincidence is arrangement under which carrier and the beneficiary are liable to share the cost and group insurance is uh, covered to uh, groups this is because illness experience is reasonably predict in a group uh, just like a school uh, children or a inmates of a institution so uh, the group entirely will be covered and there will be uh, proper criteria is how many of uh, them will get treatment on what regular basis so that type of uh, insurance is group insurance we are praying for a group so the next segment is reimbursement mechanism this is third party is giving to dentist or for the services provided the third party system or third party giving the money back to dentist but the payment mechanism is what the patient is paying to third party okay this is like a triangle patient pays the third party by payment mechanism and the third party is reimbursing for the services rendered to the dentist so payment mechanism is deductible for insurance and group insurance that is only a few that's what uh, they mentioned in the chapter so there are many other mechanisms and the reimbursement mechanisms common one are ucr concept table of allowances and fee schedules don't think that these are the only system existing in uh, that country there are many other mechanisms but since it is mentioned in the textbooks we are studying this okay you see our concept is a uh, little bit tricky and the table of allowances and fee schedule so if you have a graphical or a diagrammatic way it is easy to understand so the ucr concept is uh, commonly applied in delta dental plan so it is a one of the reimbursement mechanism so let's see what is exactly ucr concept so let's take this an example mr x mr y and mr z is practicing at location abc all are having same qualification that is BDS and they are charging for scaling or oral profile access hundred dollars Mr. Y150 and Mr. Z two hundred dollars okay so UCR concept is like the usual fee of these three people will be taken up by the third party and calculate a customary fee which is customer friendly so even if you charge 250 300 there is no point there will be a customary fee calculation by the third party so they decide how much you can ask from the patient so this UCR concept is the best method of payment because it uh, prevents the uh, uh, exploitation of patients some dentist might uh, charge very high and some might uh, get very low payment so this ensures a uniform payment mechanism so this is a usual fee what is their fee for a particular service but the location and the qualification should be same if it is MDS it can be different so for MDS qualification the customer fee also will be different so it will be calculated among the MDS people this will be calculated among the BDS people at a particular location and mostly this will be calculated by taking percentile so percentile we have already seen previously so just an example the customary fee calculated by the third party is $150 for a oral profile access so each treatment will have different different usual fee so that is customary fee which is customer friendly so you can see that mr. Y's usual fee and customary fee is matching okay 
so this this and matching for mr y so mr y's fee is reasonable when usual and customary fee is matching that's known as reasonable fee so that that is just a hypothetical uh, scenario uh, usually it will be uh, reasonable for every patient and for also dentist working in that particular area so this is the ucr concept this should be adopted everywhere because it is both beneficial for the patient those who cannot afford very much treat uh, treatment charges and also for dentist because those are paying uh, or asking less money because of their facilities and some might ask very high fee so all dentists will get a reasonable amount from the patient so this is ucr concept so ucr concept i have explained you in detail so the next one is table of allowances that is like a list of covered services that assigned for each service so each uh, treatment services uh, there will be a particular allowances uh, will be given to the dentist by the third party but the problem is that represents the total charge for the services but which will not necessarily fulfill the dentist fee for services so dentist might be uh, charging two hundred dollars for a uh, oral profile axis or his mind is uh, mind uh, is usual fee or his mind the fee will be two hundred dollars but uh, the allowances he will be getting only one fifty dollars so what happens is if the dentist fee becomes more than the assigned to the service by the third party the remaining fifty dollars will be collected by the dentist from the patient so the patient has to pay that fifty dollars extra so that is why uh, this is a failure because uh, the patient might not be knowing this uh, uh, extra amount he has to pay to the dentist because he already taken the insurance from the third party. So that patient might oppose uh, this uh, table of allowances. Only when the treatment charges if more than that of covered services. Fee schedule is like uh, another uh, mechanism where the list of charges by the dentist. So every dentist will give their uh, list, list of charges and there will be a mean payment will be taken. So it will affect those who are charging more and it will be beneficial those who are charging less. So the dentist opposes due to in inflexibility and lack of autonomy. So the prepayment plans we can subdivide into four types. One is commercial insurance plans. Second one is non-profit organization. Okay, so commercial insurance plans is totally based on the profit. So non-profit organization, which is only uh, think of the welfare of uh, dentists and patients. So that is Delta Dental Plan and Blue Cross uh, Blue Shield plans. Then uh, the group practices like prepaid group practices and capitation plans. So let's see what is commercial insurance plans. So we have seen uh, when an insurance uh, company is uh, giving insurance, the risk must follow certain criteria. We have already seen uh, because they will be more selective about groups uh, to choose to offer dental insurance and they claim no obligation towards the dental health of community because their priority is only business and profit. So they do not conduct fee audits and post treatment dental examination because they have no obligations how the treatment went was it uh, beneficial to the dentist or the patient's uh, treatment patient who received the treatment and uh, since they operate only for profit they always charge higher premiums. So that is about commercial insurance plans. So next we learn about non-profit organization because uh, commercial insurance plans is just for profit. So people thought of a non-profit organization then this Delta Dental Plan uh, came into existence. It is uh, synonymous with the name Dental Service Corporation. It is nothing but it is a legal body constituted uh, to run by a non-profit organization on a state by state basis and sponsored by a dental society to negotiate and the third party for the dental care so always there will be control of the cost because there is no uh, plan of making profit out of it
but uh, they are subjected to the insurance law of the state because this is the most commonly in the US state so each state will be having different different insurance law so they have to oblige the insurance law of that particular state so it was started like national association of dental service plan or nadsb in june 1966 with the help of american dental association then it changed its name to delta dental plan in 1969 april so the philosophy is that the practitioners can adapt their traditional practice to meet the demand of group purchase because um, a patient is registering to delta dental plan uh, will be real or will be allocated to the dentist who are registered in delta dental plan so it is like a group a group practice if one treatment option is not available one dentist you can be referred to the next uh, dentist who can offer that particular treatment but under the uh, closed panel so basically uh, there are two types of dentist i'll explain you uh, more by having a, a diagrammatic representation about participating and non-participating dentist so it's uh, explains you about 90th percentile and 50th percentile how the calculation all about so let's see what is delta dental plan so in delta dental plan we know that it was started as nadsp in 1969 later its name changed to delta plan in 1969 so it follows ucr mechanism of percentile calculation we have already seen how to calculate percentiles and there is no profit this is a non-profit association with along with blue cross and blue shield so in delta dental plan there are two types of dentist so dentist can register in delta dental plan as a participating dentist or non-participating dentist so the criteria are different and the reimbursement mechanism is different so let's see what are the basic difference between the participating dentist and non-participating dentist the first and foremost difference is the reimbursement amount so the participating dentist will be getting at a 90th percentile reimbursement for the same treatment the non-participating will get only the 50th percentile so that is a huge difference of reimbursement but the participating dentist has to pre-file his usual fee so we have seen what is usual what is customary and what is reasonable fee so he has to file the usual fee but he doesn't need to file usual fee for participating dentists there will be auditing of his accounts by the delta dental plan auditors but he is uh, having no auditing of his accounts then there will be post quality check evaluation by the inspectors from the delta dental plan in case of participating dentist but there is no quality check in non-participating dentist so the participating dentist can take up patients only from the delta dental plan patients from the patients those who have registered in delta dental plan he uh, he can't take up any other plan patients uh, there are other plans like uh, cavitation plan um, blue cross blue shield plans so such plans uh, patients uh, participating dentist cannot take up but non-participating dentist can uh, give treatment to any patients from any uh, scheme so he can include any patients and uh, participating dentist is obliged to give a fixed amount to the delta dental plans reserve fund but uh, this non-participating dentist uh, no need to give such funds so non-participating dentist has so much benefits this is we cannot say it is benefits but benefit for the dentist uh, not for the patient but he gets only 50th percentile payment uh, whereas the participating dentist get at a 90th percentile payment okay so that is delta dental plan so next we have blue cross blue shield program it is also a non-profit organization it is actually association of federation of 38 separate health insurance organization 
and companies in the United States. It started in 1960. Uh, Blue Cross started in 1960 and Blue Shield in 1948 and both merged in 1982. So it is just, uh, as I said, it is a non-profit health service corporation like Delta Plan. It follows 50th percentile mechanism. Now let's move on to prepaid group or group practices. So it is a term given to a group practice that provides dental services on a prepaid basis. Such groups are now generally regarded as open panel, though this has not always been so. So open panel means all uh, patients can uh, approach to uh, this group of dentist and a dentist also having flexibility to uh, work. So these definitions are uh, very much uh, complicated in uh, finance and dental care. ADA defined as it's a type of dental practice in which dentists sometimes in association with members of other health professions agree firmly themselves on a certain central arrangement designed to provide efficient dental health services. It is just like a hospital where uh, the dentist along with other doctors can work together with a central arrangement just how we see in a uh, hospital. So we have few types of group practices that is general practice, single speciality and multi speciality. General practices groups composed of entirely general practitioners if a hospital of uh, like a big dental clinic or with many dentists but all are doing general practitioners there is no specialist there is uh, no uh, special uh, divisions so patients comes uh, all can do all the treatment that is general practice single speciality is a single speciality members will be uh, working like like an endodontist like a root canal center so all the endodontists work there no other Treatments will be done there in, in general. Multi specialties, more specialties uh, working at the same center, just like a hospital where endodontist will be there, periodontist, prosthodontist, all the specialties will be working at the same place. These are the group practices. So, HMO is a type of uh, group practice, it is known as health maintenance organization. So it has four components. So let's see what are the components of HMO. So the health maintenance organization or HMO is a different uh, group practice. So it has basically four components or principles. There is a system of health care that is uh, providers where the patients can avail treatment. That is system of health care. The second one, the treatment services offered by these providers. Then there will be an enrolled group, that is the people who enrolled in this health maintenance organization, just like any other uh, any other models like Delta Dental Plan or Blue Cross or Blue Shield. And the last mechanism is reimbursement. So how the providers were paid. So, these are the models or how the dental personals are being reimbursed by the HMO. So, the first staff model, the HMO repays every person in the staff model. So, all staffs of that staff model, HMO pays individually. But in group model, the HMO pays a bulk amount and the group model will dis may distribute it the amount with uh, themselves but the HMO pays a single bulk amount to the group model. The third one is independent practice association. So these two are group model. Now, this is an independent uh, practice like uh, individually they are practicing at different uh, places but they are agreed uh, with the HMO plans. So they also get individually the reimbursement. So these are different. Why? Because this is not a group model. These two are group model. And this is again an independent uh, practice association type. 
but uh, it works under capitation plan that is why the primary care capitated network they also receives individually the amount so this is how HMO reimburses the dental personnel so we have four groups that is staff model group model independent practice association and primary care capitated network this is capitation plan and these are the components or principles of HMO so HMO is nothing but a group model or a prepaid groups so the capitation plan is a different uh, reimbursement mechanism where the third party uh, reimburse uh, the health maintenance organization or a group practice or an independent practice association or an individual dentist a established sum on a monthly or yearly basis but based on the number of patients so with the third party if the dentist is with agreement uh, on capitation plan basis he receives yearly or monthly a fixed sum based on the number of patients not uh, particularly based on the number of services he provided but anyway he has to perform a certain uh, procedures in each patients even if he does the treatment or not uh, doing the treatment he will receive the sum that is the advantage uh, the money is paid regardless of whether the patient utilizes a care or not in return the patient is entitled to receive a certain sets of services for a specified period of time so it is totally based on the number of patients not based on the particular treatment services so in areas where there is a real or perceived oversupply of dentists these capitation plans could be attractive to both purchaser and provider because um, it is beneficial for dentist if um, dentist is not getting enough of treatment uh, at least he gets few patients he will receive a fixed amount of sum so when we have a lot of uh, dentist supply this type of uh, mechanism would be beneficial but those who are having a good practice this might not be a good plan so this is a another way of uh, reimbursement mechanism but it is a different one uh, just like our UCR fee schedules table of allowances and capitation plan so the salary is what uh, the intent system is currently following dentist in practice group uh, or in armed forces or any uh, by the public agencies it allows the dentists to be largely free of the business concern uh, of a running practice uh, by allowing the dentist to concentrate on clinical matters. Fringe benefits are also attractive, but the problem is there could be lack of financial incentives, uh, and it uh, will uh, those who are need to be very highly productive. So he'll be get only fixed amount monthly, so he will not um, ex explore his potential so we have some public programs uh, usually like uh, not all the insurance companies or the, all the private firms will not able to meet up their people's needs so the government is always keeping some programs for the public's help so such programs in United States is Medicare and Medicaid and national health insurance is in United Kingdom Medicare is the 18th Social Security Amendment in 1965 known as Medicare. These programs uh, remove all financial barriers for hospitals and physician services for people 65 or above. So by 1970 it has two parts. One is hospital insurance and the part B is supplemental insurance. So both is having a complex uh, series of services benefits for uh, patients Medicare was brought into being because the voluntary health insurance system was unable to provide adequately persons for 60 because most of the insurance companies will not provide insurance for aged people so that is the importance of Medicare and the dental segment is very limited in this uh, sector because it requires hospitalization Medicaid is the 19th amendment of the Social Security Act of 1965. So the origin, original intent of the program was to provide funds to meet the health care need of uh, all the indigent and medically indigent persons. 
so it has inpatient care outpatient care and laboratory and x-ray so it, this is mainly for indigenous people of united states they have nursing facilities family planning services and physical physician services so national health insurance scheme is of uh, germany not england it is funded by public health program so we have in indian scenario we have very very uh, negligible amount of insurance the common plans are fee for service that is most common then dental insurance is negligible uh, and even if it is there it requires hospitalized uh, scenario and free or discounted rate uh, in public sector is obtained from defense and railways and uh, esis uh, that is employee state insurance schemes and central government employee scheme and also from state government hospital also we can get a discounted rate uh, dental treatment so that's all about uh, the dental in the dental payment or the payment in dental care so it's the most uh, toughest chapter but the concept once you uh, are clear with uh, you can easily study this chapter so mostly the questions asked are a ucr mechanism delta dental plan capitation plan fee schedules most of the short notes are asked from here insurable risk is another short note most commonly delta dental plan is asked for eight marks or a five marks question uh, and sometimes it might ask the private third party or the post payment or budget payment plan okay i'll come up with a new session on dentistry and more thank you